hi guys welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new without further ado let's go ahead and get straight into today's video so as you guys can see i already have my nails fully prepped i just went in with my matte peel off base coat because i am doing the pop off method for today's video and if you guys are interested in knowing more about my prep work i will leave some videos listed down below where i go into it and i show you guys exactly what i do but as you guys can see i already have my nail tip sized out and i'm just going to go ahead and cure them on using some matte top coat so while i am prepping the nail i did want to address something that people have been commenting on and that is my pinky nail so in one of my videos i I did say that it was a broken nail and that is true this nail is actually broken but i do know that it's not just a broken nail it is also a fungus and it's been something that i've been dealing with for a very long time and i will kind of like dive into it a little bit deeper one of these days but today is not that day i will eventually dive a little bit deeper into what's going on with my pinky nail how we got here um but i just haven't really been in a place where i feel comfortable to yet because it is still something that i'm very insecure about but of course i feel like you guys definitely need an explanation so that will be coming soon but enough of that and on to the nails i am just going ahead and trimming them down just a little bit i did want to keep them pretty long and after everything is the same length i'm going to use my cuticle nippers just to cut down the size of my middle finger and my ring finger And because the sides of that tip is poking out on the pinky, I am going to cut that down as well. And lastly, before I do anything else, I'm just going to shape up these tips using my 80-80 grit nail file. For today's base, I will be using two different gel polishes to create an acrylic ombre. I am going to be going in with a light pink and a lavender purple. And if you guys don't know, I did actually review both of these gel polishes along with the other colors that came in this kit. I reviewed that not too long ago, so I will leave that listed in the description box below as well as in the cards above. I will also, of course, link this set down below in the description box along with its matching discount code so that you could save 15% on your purchase. So as you can see, I'm completely covering up that nail tip using this gel polish and I'm going in with my second coat and as you can see I didn't really blend it out too much but I didn't have to worry about that because the nude that I will be using is pretty much close to the pink but if your nude isn't as close to the pink as mine is I definitely do recommend blending it out as best as you can this is just so that you can achieve a seamless ombre so you guys know that normally during the application process I do kind of just talk to you guys about a few things but for today I don't have really much of anything to talk about no special updates or anything like that what i will note is that i did mix a little bit of pink gel polish into my monomer and so once i start to encapsulate the nail my clear may look a little bit pink so that is the reason why but besides that i will just go ahead and let you guys enjoy the rest of this application and we will be back for the shaping and filing
Okay, so this is what the application is looking like and now we're ready to shape and file these nails. To start off, I'm going to be taking my 88 grit nail file just to file the undersides and side walls of the nail. And if you happen to be wondering why I file my nails in this specific way or why I do this first rather than other parts, um, there isn't necessarily a specific reason as to why I do this first. Um, it's just something that I'm used to. I've been doing this for quite some time now. So I definitely just recommend filing your nails in whatever order you feel comfortable with, whether that's sealing the cuticle first, going over the entire surface, or filing the sides first as I do. It doesn't matter if you are a beginner, it's something that you could definitely play around with and see what feels best for you. But if you are someone who has been doing nails for a long time, it really doesn't matter which order you do it in because it should look the same either way. So after shaping up the size, I'm going to take this coarse carbide bit just to go ahead and seal those cuticles. Now, even though this is a coarse carbide bit, it does have a rounded tip, so it does make it easier to work around the cuticle. For the most part, I would recommend using something that has a medium coarseness or a fine coarseness. So that could be a medium carbide bit or ceramic bit. You could go in with a medium sanding band or even a cuticle bit. It really doesn't matter as long as the method is working best for you. What I will say is that for this step in the process, you want to make sure that you're moving across the surface constantly and not leaving that drill bit in one spot as to not cause any heat spikes. Next up, I'm going to be going back in with that 80-80 grit nail file just to completely smooth out the surface. So for me, this step normally doesn't take too long because my application remains pretty smooth and I just like to go in with the file just to make sure everything is nice and leveled. I'd say for the most part, the entire shaping process, so 
filing the sides and the undersides to um, sealing the cuticle to smoothing out the surface. It normally takes me about 20 to 25 minutes tops and that's just because my application is pretty smooth. But with that being said, I have been doing nails for almost three years now and I'm kind of just getting to the point where it doesn't take me super long to file my nails because my structure is pretty much smooth when I finish my application. But again, that has taken me almost three years. So if you are beginning or you're just feeling um, a little bit insecure, you feel like you're stuck in your learning curve, just remember to not be so hard on yourself because I know a lot of, you know, nail techs who've been doing this for a long time, they throw out like crazy numbers. They'll be like, oh yeah, I can do a set in like 45 minutes. Me personally, I can't do that. I haven't been doing nails for that long to really boost up my speed. But of course, I know that eventually I will get there with practice and with time. So of course, don't be too hard on yourself because like my journey is gonna be my journey and your journey is gonna be yours. So take it day by day. Remember to practice and to keep your head up and to remain confident that in due time, you're gonna be exactly where you wanna be because I promise you when you get there and you're like, wow, my nails look amazing, you're not even gonna know how much time has actually gone by and how much you've actually improved but enough of me being a motivational speaker um, i'm just going to go ahead and file the tips at an angle to create a nice curved shape i'm not exactly doing the moon crescent shape but i do want them to look a little bit more c curved And now I'm just going in with that same drill bit just to clean up the undersides of the nails. And because I do have that base of gel polish, I don't wanna go too crazy because I don't wanna file that color away, but I am just gonna go ahead and thin it out just a little bit. And lastly, before we get into the nail art, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my mini buffer just to smooth out the surface. And I'm actually making sure to get it especially smooth for today's nail art because I don't want any issues with the gel polish bleeding into the scratches of the nails. So before we do anything, I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe off my nails using some isopropyl alcohol. And to start off, I'm gonna be doing a light purple French on my pinky nail. So if you couldn't tell by the thumbnail, I'm actually doing matte nails for today and there is some glitter incorporated. So the layers in which I do the nail art may look a little bit confusing. I'm not gonna lie, when I was doing it, I was also confused myself. And that's really just because I am using a matte top coat and I want everything to look nice and seamless. I'm gonna try my best to walk you guys through the process and how I layered everything. But if you guys are confused, um, just know that I was confused as well because it is a little bit difficult to do nail art and add nail gems with matte top coat. But of course, like I said, I will try and walk you through as best as I can. So after I fully applied that French tip, I'm just gonna go ahead and cure for a full 30 seconds. So here is the part where I'm gonna go in with some of these flowers and a little bit of nail gems, not too many, just a few. And I am curing on those flowers and gems using some base coat. You can use rhinestone glue or anything that's like kind of tacky and dries down. Now, because I am using a peel off base coat for today's set and I'm just gonna pop them off and I'm probably never going to wear them again. But if you are looking for something that's gonna give you longevity, I would definitely recommend using a rhinestone glue or something that's a little bit tacky like a bling glue. So once I have my assortment of flowers all placed on, I'm just going to go ahead and cure for a full 30 seconds. So now I'm just going to go ahead and add my single layer of matte top coat and I'm making sure to avoid the flowers and the gems as best as I can because I want it to remain nice and shiny. And once it's all applied, I'm going to cure for a full 60 seconds. 
Okay, so now I'm finally doing that glitter French tip. I'm going in with the same lavender purple that I used to create the first layer of the French tip. I'm just really making sure to outline everything that I did in the first layer, as well as gently go around those flowers. Now, if you are using a gel polish that is pretty opaque and you don't have to use two coats, this could honestly be your first layer. Like you don't have to do two as I did, but I wanted to make sure that everything was nice and opaque because I didn't want to be able to see through the glitter. So once I have that second layer of the French tip applied, I'm just going to make sure to cover every nook and cranny with this glitter before I cure for a full 30 seconds. So that pinky nail is completed and we're just going to move on to the other nails now. So as you guys know by the title, this is my Mother's Day set and in the comment where I was suggested to do this set, they wanted some bling. So I was like, you know what, let's go ahead and pull out these really big and just extravagant um, nail pieces that I have. And at first I really was not feeling it. I wasn't sure if it would actually go with the rest of the set, but once I completed this nail and I did the rest, I was like, you know what? This is actually really pretty. So after I've cured on that nail charm, I am gonna go around it with a few flowers. I'm going in with a mix of the light pink and some purple. I kind of just did it randomly. I didn't really pick any color in specific, just kind of mixed it up here and there, but I am gonna take two smaller flowers and put them on the edge. And then the big flower is gonna go in the center. And after flash curing them on, I am going to be taking some small purple gems and going around it just kind of like randomly to make that purple really pop in this nail set. I did also go in with some gold beads just to fill in any gaps and make the gold pop even more. And just so that you guys know what to expect when you're using these gold beads, um, definitely make sure that you're moving pretty quickly. You don't want to take too long trying to place them because they will start sliding and it just gets really agitating after a while. But after finally getting those nail charms in place, I am going in with my single layer of matte top coat. And of course, I'm making sure to really focus on not getting it on the nail gems. So onto the middle finger, we are finally more than halfway done. For this nail, I'm gonna be doing a glitter French outline. And similarly to what I did on my pinky finger, I'm gonna be going in with my first layer of that outline before I go in with my matte top coat. And when it comes to doing a French outline, there really isn't much advice that I can give you except to use a very long brush and to make sure that you're not flooding the brush in too much gel polish because otherwise it'll be too thick and you might risk messing up everything. But for the most part, a French outline is definitely something that you just have to practice. Even I still hate doing it to this day. I think it looks really pretty, but I'm just really not good at it. Like this. Was probably my third try. I didn't include it because it would just take too much time. But yeah, after my third try, I finally decided that I liked it and I cured it for 30 seconds. So after I have that first layer of the French outline applied and cured, I'm gonna go in with these small butterfly charms. And to be honest, at this point, I wasn't exactly sure if I wanted to do it, but after I did it, I was like, yeah, this is definitely really cute. And I kind of feel like that normally happens when I do freestyles. I kind of just jump into it and I don't know fully what I wanna do. Like I have a concept but not every nail is as detailed and yeah so this was kind of just like a tester but surprisingly I really liked it so I did go ahead and cure these on using some base coat as I did with my pinky nail and that seemed to work just fine I just made sure to use a little bit more than I normally would but as I mentioned before I would definitely recommend using a rhinestone glue because it probably wouldn't move around as much and you won't have to worry about them slipping and sliding before you cure it So after curing on those butterflies for about 30 seconds, I'm gonna go in with my final layer of matte top coat and I'm gonna cure that for 60 seconds. And of course, while I'm doing this, I am making sure to avoid those butterflies as best as I can.
And lastly, I'm gonna go in with that last layer of the French outline. After the outline is complete, I'm gonna to top it off with some glitter and cure for about 30 seconds. Okay, so this nail is finished and now we're on to the pointer finger. So in the center of this nail, I will be actually doing an acrylic flower. So I wanted to make sure that the flower had a center. And for that center, I'm gonna be using this purple rhinestone and I'm gonna put about four of those gold beads around it just to give it a little bit of um, some interest, I guess. And once I had everything nice and placed exactly where I wanted it, I just went ahead and cured it for 30 seconds. And so now we're finally onto the acrylic flowers. And as you can see, I'm doing pretty small beads. I've noticed that my flowers, um, specifically my acrylic flowers, are always like super like thick and chunky. And I felt like it was necessary to try smaller beads so that those petals could look more like petals. And another thing that I am trying to do is when I am using acrylic and creating acrylic flowers, I'm trying my best to dry out my acrylic brush so that it doesn't run and you can really mold it and shape it into exactly what you want it to look like and so with me doing those two things i really really loved these petals because it actually looked like a flower and it was probably the best i'd ever done with acrylic flowers so i was pretty proud of myself I also added about three flower petals on the top and bottom of my ring finger just to make it a little bit more interesting. And I don't know if it's just me, but like once I start doing acrylic flowers, I really don't want to stop because I'm having so much fun. So that's honestly the reason why I decided to add these and also because I thought it would just make the nail look even more extravagant than it already looks. To be honest, I wanted the set to be super complicated and just really extra because this is supposed to be for Mother's Day and I really like only do nails like this on my mom. So I was like, you know what, let me do something that's inspired by her, something that I know that she would definitely rock. So something super extra and super just glamorous is what I'm trying to achieve here. So once I'm finished with those acrylic flowers, I'm gonna go back to my pointer finger and just surround it with more of these smaller flowers. And I did decide to do a mix of both the purple and the pink flowers, as well as a mix of small and large. And of course, I am going in with a few of those purple rhinestones as well. I've been seeing so many spring sets using this design where it kind of goes in like a swirl down the nail. And I really just wanted to try it because I think it's super cute. So like I mentioned not too long ago, I am going in with those purple rhinestones, but I'm also going in with those gold beads as well. And after I'm about halfway done with the nail, I did go ahead and flash cure it just for a little bit so that I can continue to do the top. And once I have all of those flowers placed and cured on, I'm gonna finish this nail off with some matte top coat, making sure not to get that matte top coat on the rhinestones and the flowers. Mm -hmm. 
And lastly, we are finally on to the last nail. So for my thumbnail, I'm doing something very similar to what I did to my pinky. It will be a glitter French. So what I'm doing here is I'm going in with that purple and I'm just creating the outline for it. But for this glitter French tip, I will be doing something a little bit different. I've never done something like this before, but I will be doing a gradient from this lavender purple into the pink. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty bad when it comes to creating an ombre using gel polishes. So the first layer is not great at all. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about in just a second, but the first layer was super patchy and the blend was not great at all. So yeah, if you are trying this out, definitely invest in like an ombre brush or something that's made to like blend two colors of gel polish together. I did just go in with this random brush that I use for basically everything that like I don't have a designated brush for. But if you can't really tell, the blend in like real life was not great at all. Um, on camera, it's not too bad, but it just was not good. But anyways, after wiping down the sides and curing for about 30 seconds, I'm gonna go in with a single layer of matte top coat. And after it's fully applied, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe down the sides and cure for a full 60 seconds. So because this is my last layer, I wanted to make sure that I did a pretty decent job before I went in with the glitter. So of course, I'm going back in with that lavender and just doing the outline over again. And now I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the gaps only about halfway down the nail because I do wanna leave some space for the pink. Okay, and now I'm gonna go in with that final layer of pink and I'm making sure to get them pretty close But I don't want to actually mix them at this point What I did end up doing is I took a little bit of that purple and pink mixed it together and then I sort of like just Striped it on like this and this is probably a very amateur way of doing this But again, i'm not really good at creating an ombre using gel polish But for the most part it actually came out pretty nice The ombre was somewhat seamless like I could have done better But at this point I was like five hours in and I was like, you know what? Let's just move on So after wiping off the sides i'm gonna go ahead and fully cover this in glitter Making sure to cover every little nook and cranny and I will say that after applying the glitter It definitely looked a little bit better like the blend didn't look as harsh to me anymore more so the glitter definitely saved this and once I have all of that glitter applied I'm gonna wipe down the sides and cure for a full 30 seconds So this entire set is of course a freestyle, but this part in specific was definitely a little bit more impromptu. I didn't really plan on having too much going on with the snail, but I did want it to blend in a little bit more with the rest of the set. So I did go in with some of these gold butterflies and I cured those on with some base coat. And so here's what everything is looking like once I've completed all of the nail art. And you guys, I'm just absolutely loving how extra and glamorous this set is. So here I'm just going to go ahead and finish off this set using some cuticle oil. And that completes today's set. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. This is probably the most extra set that I've done in a very long time, but of course I really love it. Like I said, I was requested to do a Mother's Day set. So if you are watching this, I hope that this is up to your standards. I wanted to do something that was super extra and something that, you know, reminded me of something that my mom would do. When it comes to the flowers in this set, I definitely think that it is Mother's Day appropriate. But of course, I do also think that it is appropriate for spring as well as the summer but of course i would love to hear what you guys think of this set of course let me know if you would wear it for the spring for the summer for mother's day anything like that i definitely would wear this if i was someone's mom but as always thank you guys so so much for tuning in today and i will see you guys in the next one